strong I just strong I vote on this measure. Further debate, members. Mr. Anderson. I think so. Senator Anderson, uh, wait for your microphone to go, Mom, please. Go ahead. Question for the author. Senator Semidian, will you take a question from Senator Anderson? Yes, Madam President. Go right ahead, Senator Anderson. On a logistics, from a logistics standpoint, so I drive in, I don't have a license, I'm driving the car illegally. If we don't impound the car, we certainly can't let them continue to drive illegally. They don't have a license. Secondly, if I have 50 of these folks coming through, For, forgive me, Madam President. Where do I valet these park cars? The, I, th I think there was a question. I think there are two questions. The first right. question, which I took to be an implicit in the statement that was made, is um, how do we make sure that someone drives the car who is licensed? And the way the bill is structured, there are a couple of different options. If there is a licensed driver in the vehicle, then while the driver of the vehicle can and will be cited for driving unlicensed, because that, of course, is a violation of our vehicle code, the licensed dr driver in the car may be authorized to drive the vehicle away from the scene of the DUI checkpoint, again, assuming that there is no DUI issue in the car. So in that instance, a citation for driving without a license and an authorized licensed driver in the vehicle. Alternatively, the unlicensed driver could call someone who was licensed and ask them to come to the scene. Or still another option is that if the vehicle has been taken, not impounded for the 30-day period, but taken for a short period of time, either to, a, to an authorized lot, that then within the next day or two, the individual could either come himself with somebody who was authorized uh, and licensed to take the car or have the registered owner, if that was still some other person, because we don't know if the driver is the registered owner, have the registered owner, assuming he or she is licensed, arrive to claim their car. But again, the goal is to make that happen in a day or two rather than have a formal impoundment of 30 days. Thank you. Thank you. For that. Um, I still have difficulty supporting this because when we looked at cell phone use, it wasn't curbed because the fines weren't high enough. And I believe that if we lower this standard, then though, what we're doing is encouraging more people without driver's licenses to be on the roads. There's a reason why they don't have a driver's license. It's not because they're a good driver. I urge a no vote. Senator Correa. Thank you, Senators. You say I'm going to be supporting this measure, but I want to be clear on a couple of issues. Number one, that all of us have to continue to do everything we can to stop folks from driving under the influence of alcohol or other drugs. No doubt about it. The challenge is do you take resources from this most important effort, which is stopping people from driving under the influence and focus on other matters. Second issue is impounding a vehicle for 30 days. This has now become a revenue source for local governments. Let me repeat it. This is now becoming a revenue source. Towing company, local governments are now making money off of this issue. What's the public policy behind impounding a car for 30 days? What is the reason? What's wrong with having an individual come in that's a licensed individual come and pick up that automobile when you have an individual without a driver's license? Are we here now to essentially move forward a government action that takes property from citizens, private individuals, for no valid reason? You impound a car for a day, okay for two days, but for 30 days? What's the rationale? What this bill simply tries to do is restore some transparency and common sense to this issue of trying to stop folks from driving under the influence. If that is our goal, and I say that's the goal of the checkpoints, to stop people that shouldn't be driving that are under the influence, then let's focus on the issue at hand. I'm gonna ask for an I vote here. Senator Hancock. 
Thank you, Ma Madam President. I also rise in support of this bill. As chair of the Public Safety Committee, where the bill was heard, uh, I am not opposed to impoundment of vehicles. I've actually carried bills that have impoundment of vehicles in them. I, I believe the committee is opposed to using impoundment as a source of revenue rather than for a, a source related to a public safety need. I think the statistics cited by Senator Steinberg speak for themselves. The fact that since 2007, there's been a 53% statewide increase in these impoundments and 24,000 stops, but only th impoundments, but only about 3,000 DUIs because of the neighborhoods that are chosen. This leads members to cynicism about government and can have tragic impacts on the lives of individuals and families. Uh, this bill will stop the misuse of DUI checkpoints, and I would urge an I vote. Any further debate, members? Seeing none, Senator Simidian, you may close. Thank you, Madam President, and thank you, members. I think it's been a helpful debate. I want to underscore just a couple of points before I ask for an I vote. The first is that folks who are driving unlicensed will be cited for driving unlicensed. The second is that if we value the DUI checkpoints, and I am among those who do, we need to restore their credibility and take a threat away from their continued use by ensuring that they are used appropriately. And for all of us who are concerned about overreaching governments dipping into the pockets of hardworking Californians, this is an opportunity to make sure that that process is not abused. I would respectfully ask for an aye vote. The Secretary will open the roll. Alquist. Aye. aye. Anderson. Berryhill. Blakesley. Calderon. Aye. Canella. Aye. Corbett. Aye. Correa. Aye. aye. De Leon. Aye. aye. Desaigne. Aye. aye. Dutton. Emerson. Aye. Evans. Aye. aye. Fuller. Gaines. No. no. Hancock. Aye. aye. Harmon. Hernandez. Aye. aye. Huff. Kehoe? Aye. Aye. LaMalfa? Aye. Aye. Leno? Aye. Aye. Ted Lou? Aye. Aye. Carol Lou? Aye. Lowenthal? Aye. Aye. Negretta McLeod? Aye. Aye. Padilla? Aye. Aye. Pavley? Aye. Price? Aye. Aye. Rubio? Aye. Aye. Runner? Semidian? Aye. Aye. Steinberg? Aye. Strickland? Yes. No. Vargas? Aye. Aye. Walters? Aye. No. Wolk? Aye. Aye. Wright? I Wyland, no ye, ye I. Call Anderson, the absent no. members. Anderson, no. Berryhill, I. Blakesley, I. Dutton, I. Emerson, I. Fuller, no. Harmon, Huff, no. Pavley, Runner, Steinberg. Ayes 29, noes 7. The measure passes. Senator DeLeon, do you have an announcement? Senator DeLeon, an announcement? Thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, colleagues, I just want to make a quick announcement that at 1220 and Millie, after uh, Mr. Smeehan's introduction of the next bill, we'll be having a Democratic caucus. Democratic caucus at about uh, 1220 members after Mr. Samidian's next item. And that means we'll go to file item 359. And the secretary will read. Assembly Bill 512 by Assembly Member Gordon and Acclaimed to Energy. Thank you, Madam President, members. Uh, members, this measure by Assembly Member Gordon would simply enable local governments to participate uh, in the expansion of renewable energy resources by developing small-scale renewable projects. Specifically, what the bill does is it makes the local government renewable energy self-generation program uh, more viable by increasing the eligible size for renewable self-generation projects from one megawatt to five megawatts. In the current form, the program has not been effective. It's essentially been uh, dysfunctional and has not been used by local governments. Uh, the limitations in the current statute have unfortunately proven to be prohibitive because the small project size 
has been combined with an incentivized rate far below that found in other programs. This measure, as I say, simply allows programs of up to five, projects of up to five megawatts. That will make the development of these projects viable for local governments and make the program more effective. Ask for an I vote. Any debate members? Any debate? Seeing none, the secretary will call the roll. Alquist. Anderson. I. Berryhill. I. Blakesley. I. Calderon. Aye. I. Canella. I. Corbett. I. Correa. I. De Leon. I. Desaigne. I. Dutton. I. Emerson. I. Evans. I. Fuller. Gaines. I. Hancock. I. Harmon. Hernandez, I. Huff, I. Kehoe, I. LaMalfa, I. Leno, I. Ted Lou, I. Carol Lou, I. Lowenthal, I. Negretta McLeod, I. Padilla, I. Pavley, I. Price, I. Rubio, I. Runner, Semidian, I. Steinberg, Strickland, I. Vargas, I. Walters, I. Wolk, I write, I Wyland, I ye, ye I, Alquist I. Call the absent members. Fuller, Harmon, Runner, Steinberg. Eyes 36, noes zero, the measure passes. Senator Dutton, for what purpose do you rise, sir? Uh, Republican caucus, as soon as we uh, break. Thank you, Senator. Room 305. And uh, Senator Negrete McLeod, for what purpose do you rise, ma'am? Pur purposes of announcement, uh, the PERS committee will meet in room 3191 at 130. That is PERS in 3191 at 130 to hear one bill. Thank you, Senator. Members, we have a Democratic caucus announced. We have a Republican caucus announced. We have committee hearings as well. Are there any other announcements of committee hearings at this time? If not, members, I would like to, uh, at the request of the Senate desk, announce, if I could have your attention, please, regarding Senate bills. Of 150 Senate bills that might currently be taken up on the Assembly side, 80 do not have floor managers identified. Once again, 80 of 150 measures that might otherwise be taken up on the Senate side, do, on the Assembly side, do not have floor managers. Uh, members are encouraged to talk to their staffs and confirm that a floor manager has, in fact, been identified so that their bills are not unnecessarily delayed. Senator DeSaulnier, for what purpose do you rise, sir? Uh, committee announcement, I'm sorry. Please Mr. proceed. Uh, President, missed it on your first re ask. Uh, transportation will meet at 1.30 uh, in 4203 to take up one bill. We have an announcement of a transportation committee hearing. Are there any other announcements? Any other committee announcements? Then if not, at this time, the Senate will stand in recess while we go to Democratic caucus, Republican caucus, followed by committee hearings. We hope to come back into session at 2 p.m., members. Uh, not certain, but the hope and expectation is 2 p.m. Without objection, we stand in recess.